a problem about a CD, a compact disc that you might listen to some music on, at least uh, in the old days. Uh, it has a radius of about 0.12 meters, and in three seconds it goes from 0 to 2,000 RPMs. And uh, once again, I'll just sort of get rid of the 2,000 RPMs. Another video will show you how to do that and get my, uh, my omega then in radians per second, which is 209 radians per second. So these are statements of angular speed right here. And I'm definitely going to want to work with this number right here because I like working in radians per second, which are the SI units for angular speed. And it tells you that the moment of inertia of the CD is about 2.5 to 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meters square. So they're giving you the moment of inertia. What they'd like to know is what torque or what tau would be needed to get this speed to happen in the time indicated, and how many revolutions does the CD undergo while it's spinning up like that. So we'll just sort of attack uh, A first, I guess, and we'll just sort of use the relationship here. That torque is I times alpha, just like F equals MA, tau is I times alpha. Now, they've given you the I right here, so we just know the angular acceleration, and we could solve for the torque. And we can get that because we know that omega is omega naught plus alpha delta T, and so alpha then will be omega minus omega naught over delta T, something like that. This is the angular acceleration of the disk. And so that alpha can pop out pretty easily here. So we can just put a 209 radians per second divided by the 3 seconds. And so the angular acceleration I get for this uh, particular CD hit then would be something like 70 radians per second squared. So that's what the angular acceleration of the disk must be to get it to go from not spinning at all to 209 radians per second in the three seconds as advertised. That would be the angular acceleration. So as you can see, the problem to get the solution well in hand here, the torque must be just the moment of inertia, which is a number which is given right here. Then you would just multiply that by the 70 radians per second squared, and that will pop your answer. You can put all that in on the calculator yourself. Uh, the very next problem asked for then, uh, the next part B here, let me just make a little room here. It's asking in part B, what would the revolutions, how many revolutions does the CD undergo while it's doing this spin-up? That, of course, is a parameter theta, something like that. So we can sort of use the equation, um, equation 1 then. In particular, we know that theta is equal to theta 0 plus omega 0 delta t plus 1 half alpha delta t squared, something like that. Um, it's going to start, say, at some arbitrary position of zero right here. We know it also starts at rest, so both of these first two terms are going to be zero in here, and the theta then is just going to reduce down to one-half alpha times delta t squared. Now, I just erased it, but alpha was found just in the last part, the angular acceleration of the CD as it spins up like that, and the delta t here, I believe, is given in the problem to be three seconds. So you have all the parameters you need to solve for a theta right here. If you plug everything, you should get your answer to come out. Uh, I got something like 315 radians, and but this is not going to be a sufficient answer because I want the number of revolutions. So hopefully you know how to convert this to revolutions. Another video shows you how to do that, but I get something like 50 revolutions for that. I believe it becomes by just uh, dividing the 315 by 2 pi, since one revolution is 2 pi radians. Little conversion factor in there for you. So there you go.